Hi, and happy Tuesday, and welcome to VA Careers Live. My name is Mike Owens, and I serve as a national recruitment consultant with the Veterans Health Administration, as well as your host of our weekly segment, Talk About It Tuesday. First, I want to thank you for joining us today. I know you can be doing a lot of million things right at this moment, but I thank you for tuning in for our weekly episode of Talk About It Tuesday. Now, if you're new to the broadcast, which means you're watching for the first time, I want to let you know that we are here every Tuesday at 12 noon Eastern time. So feel free to grab a snack, grab something to drink, and join us as we talk about careers here at VA. Now, whether you're tuning in for the first time or you've been with us for the last three years, you know that we always want you to be part of the conversation. I like to hear all the great things that you guys have to say. So feel free to leave any questions and comments in the comment section below. Our team and I, we like to go through those questions throughout the day and throughout the week to make sure that all your questions are answered and all your comments are addressed. Also, we... Uh, as you guys know, if you've been watching for the last few weeks, you know that sometimes we are able to answer some questions live. So make sure if there's anything that you want to answer today, obviously we can't get to everything, but if there are some questions or comments that you would like answered or addressed on today's episode, go ahead and drop those in the chat box and uh, we'll be sure to try to answer those today if we have some time. Um, and we also want you to share our broadcast. We all know someone that wants to work here at VA, so... If you know someone or you just want to get this information out to anybody, just go ahead and click that share button. We do have a couple of hashtags that are associated with this broadcast. That's hashtag work at VA. Again, the first one is hashtag work at VA. And the next hashtag is really simple. Hashtag VA careers. Again, it's hashtag VA careers. And so with that, we'll go ahead and get um, started with our broadcast today. Oh, I'm sorry. Before, how can I forget? I almost forget. It is Super Bowl week so i know i have a lot of football fans that are out there especially those that are in the philadelphia area and the kansas city area but no matter where you are right now um i want to know who are your super bowl picks who are you picking to win the super bowl this weekend i will say now my boss my boss is a kansas city chiefs fan he he lives in the kansas city area he's he's chief Kansas City Chiefs through and through, and I have a couple of coworkers that love the Chiefs. But this week, I'm gonna go. I'm going to go with the Philadelphia Eagles. So my pick for the Super Bowl winner is the Philadelphia Eagles. So if I'm not here in this spot next week, you know why? My boss will take take me out for going uh, picking the other team. But yes, this for this Super Bowl, I will be picking the Philadelphia Eagles. So go ahead and put your picks down in the comment section, and I can't wait to see. Uh, what you guys have uh, have chosen for your Super Bowl winner. Uh, with that, we're going to go into our broadcast today. Today, we're just going to go down and talk about the job announcement itself. Um, and I know anyone that has applied for a job for the federal government or with VA specifically, you guys are very familiar with USA Jobs. USA Jobs Gov is the main platform to find all of the latest and greatest government positions, especially in most of the positions here at VA. And you're very familiar with going through uh, the actual announcement on USA Jobs. So today, we're just going to talk about some of the things in the job announcement. So if you if you go on USA Jobs and you, you're searching for a job and you see a bunch of uh, positions under a job title, and you click on that actual job title, the announcement for that job is going to pop up. All right. So once you... The first thing you notice at the top of the page is you'll see the job title. You'll see the department, which in this case would be the Department of Veterans Affairs. Uh, sometimes under the Department of Veterans Affairs, it'll specify if that job is under the Veterans Health Administration, the Veterans Benefits Administration, or the National Cemeteries Administration. So, you know, uh, VA has three pillars. Again, the Veterans Health Administration, uh, the Veterans uh Benefits Administration and the National Cemeteries Administration. So under the Department of Veterans, Veterans Affairs, it'll probably specify which one of those pillars that this position falls under. And then underneath there, it'll tell you which VA facility, which uh, hospital, which medical center, which clinic, which program office or whatever. It'll tell you which office that job is, uh, that vacancy is under particularly. Um, the next thing you'll see is the summary. Now, the summary won't give you everything, but it, it'll it'll basically tell you where you'll be working. It'll tell you um, uh, what position it is. It'll tell you which VA facility you're working at. It'll tell you, um, uh, you know, 
it'll give you just a brief uh, synopsis of, of the job and the job title itself. And uh, yeah, so it'll give you that. So that's just a basic summary. If you go down, it'll say this job is open too. So this will let you know who can apply for these positions. So this is important when you see a job announcement because we have to understand that just because you see a job announcement up there, it's, it may not be open to every applicant. It may be open to uh, just those that are already work for the Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, or even more specifically, it may be open to only persons that work under the Veterans Health Administration, or it may be only open to personnel that works under the Veterans Benefits Administration. So sometimes these uh, who may apply sections get really, really specific. So you have to make sure that you read because I don't want you guys to apply for announcement. Take that time to, and it takes a lot of time because you have a lot of questionnaires you have to fill out, but I don't want you guys to spend time on an, an announcement or applying for a position that you're not really eligible to apply for anyway. So again, always, 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 always check out the, this job is open to section so you can know who may, who may apply. So uh, once you get through that, you find out if you're eligible. Um, again, it may be only open to military spouses or it may be only open to veterans. Again, it may be only open to those who currently work for the federal government in any agency. Uh, it can be open to those with um, disabilities. Uh, it can be open to former federal employees. You just have to make sure you look under that who may apply section to make sure that you are eligible to apply. And the reason I'm emphasizing this section is because I get a lot of emails and a lot of messages from people saying that, hey, I, I apply for this job. I have a lot of experience in this career field. Why was I deemed ineligible? And then when we go back and actually research, they were deemed ineligible because they applied under a job announcement um, that they were not eligible based on who, uh, based on these special categories. So if that position was open to only veterans and you apply for it, but you're not a veteran, then no matter how much job experience you have in that particular career field, you won't be um you won't move forward because you're not a veteran. You're not who the hiring manager is asking to apply. So again, again, I know I'm emphasizing the section, always look at the who may apply section to make sure you're not wasting time applying for a job that you won't be eligible in. All right. Also, right under the who may apply, there's going to be a, a, a box or a section called clarif clarification from the agency. So let's say that, uh, Let's say that you go to a job announcement and it says it's only open to employees that work for the Department of Veterans Affairs. So let's say we have some, uh, yeah, let's just say we run into announcement and the only people who can apply for this announcement are those who work for the Department of Veterans, Veterans Affairs. So with that being said, most people that are VA employees look at that and be like, hey, I'm a VA, I'm a VA employee. I can apply for this job announcement. But that may not also that may not always be the case. So right under the who may apply, you will see something that says clarification from the agency. That paragraph will let you know specifically who from the Department of Veterans Affairs uh, can apply. Sometimes that clarification may say all VA employees. Sometimes that clarification may say, hey, this is only open to employees that work for the Veterans Health Administration. Sometimes it may say it's only open to employees that work under the Veterans Benefits Administration or the National Cemeteries Administration. Or it may go even further and say, hey, this position is only open for those who work at the Michael DeBakey VA Medical Center in Houston, Texas. So even though at the top it said open to VA employees in the clarification section, it may only be open to uh, personnel that work under a specific pillar or specific VA medical facility or a specific program office within VA. So again, you have to read the announcement. You have to make sure that that you are you are eligible to apply for that position because I, I know it's heartbreaking to apply for a job that you know that you have experience in. Then you get that email that says you're not eligible because you were not under that special consideration that the hire manager was looking for. So again, always read through it. Um, if you scroll down further on the job announcement, you may see some videos that's related to that career field that VA has on YouTube. They may plug in a YouTube VA careers video talking about that uh, specific 
uh, career field that you are uh, applying for. Uh, then when you go down, it'll, it'll go to the duties. Now, the duties, the duties section of the job announcement tells you a lot of things. It tells you the promotion potential. If you if there if it's a multi grade, like let's say if the the, the the job announcement says that this position is a a nine eleven twelve, which means if you start off as a G, if you get hired as a GS nine, you can eventually move up to GS eleven, then GS twelve, or in some cases you can start off at any one of those pay grades. So if you're a GS eleven and you're the most highly qualified position person for that position, guess what? You get hired as a GS eleven. Or if you're already a GS12, or you're a, or or you are a GS11, that's uh, that's qualified to become a GS12. They can hire you as a GS12. So, but the duty section will tell you that. It'll also tell you the. It'll also give you some more information about the actual position. It'll give you your work schedule. It'll tell you if your work schedule is Monday through Friday, eight to four thirty. Maybe it's seven to three thirty. Maybe it's six to two thirty. Who knows? Um, or it'll tell you that it's, you know, it may be, it has different work shifts. Maybe it's a clinician position and you may have to work an evening shift. Um, or it may tell you that you can have a compressed tour, which means you work either, you know, you can work four tens or anything, but it'll let you know that. Um, it'll let you know if the position is telework eligible. So now here is, here is what I want to stop at right now. Um, if a job says that telework is available, that does not mean that is it is a virtual or remote position. Telework just basically says that if your facility or your boss or your manager approves you to telework, that you can telework. Now, that may not mean you can telework your whole pay period. That means that you may be given, um, you may be able to telework when it deems necessary, like if you have a sick kid or, or, for anything that you can't make it to the office, they can allow you to telework at home for that day. Or maybe your job allows you to telework one or two days a week. Um, maybe they'll, but just because a job says that telework is available, remember, it does not mean that you will be teleworking full time. Also, if a position is virtual or remote, it will also say that this position is remote or this position is a virtual position. So again, I know a lot of times we see positions and it says telework available because I know a lot of people out there, they like to work from home and which is fine, but you have to make sure that you understand the language. Telework available just means that you can telework at the discretion of your management. Something that's virtual is different. A virtual job most likely means you will be working from a home office. Also remote, you'll be working from a home office or somewhere near a facility, but please, Make sure you read that work because a lot of people, they get upset because they, they apply for a job, they get selected, they they start working in that position and they're upset because they still have to come to the office a certain amount of time during the week just be, because it said telework available. So again, telework available does not mean that it's full-time telework. It's just at the discretion of your management. All right. And then they'll give you other stuff of where your duty station is. If it's virtual, obviously it'll say virtual or it'll say New Orleans if you're, if that job is posted for someone who lives in new orleans or dallas or hawaii wherever puerto rico we have a va facility in puerto rico so it'll tell you that um the next thing is just requirements it lets you know what requirements you need to be to to apply it'll say okay you must be a u.s citizen of course um you must meet background suitability investigations va employees when we get hired or even if we switch jobs we got to go through a back background check and so you must be clear for that um, it, it'll let you know if you have to serve a probationary period. Some people have to serve 30, 30 days. Some people have to serve 90 days. Some people have to serve a whole year. It just depends on what the hiring manager and the position. Um, it also lets you know what you need to be to have a completed package. So with that, another overlooked um, part of the job announcement is the required documents section. I remember, every job announcement that you apply for on USA Jobs they have a required document section. What that required document section is telling you is what is required for this application to be deemed completed. So if your, require, if your required document section says you must have a cover letter, a resume, transcripts, all right, if you complete that application without one of those three, without any of those three things, then you won't, 
your 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 uh, application won't go any further. So if a document is required, you must have all of those required documents in your application for it to be even looked at to move to the hiring manager. So again, look at the requirement, the required documents, and USA Jobs does a good does a good job at letting you know what's required as you're going through the application process. So before you click submit, it'll let you know, hey, this document is required. You haven't submitted it yet. So again, you won't get pushed towards a hiring manager if you are missing any required documents. So just make sure you read that section. Um, and the next thing is basically uh, the duties. The, the, we're going back to the duties. It'll let you know what duties that position what duty the the incumbent's going to have to do so again it'll tell you every step by step that you may be you know depending on the job announcement it'll tell you all the duties that that person will come in that person will be doing when they get hired for that position so make sure you read those duties because again i know sometimes we'll look at a job title and be like oh man i've held that job title so i'm automatically eligible eligible or i'm um, yeah i'm auto, i'm automatically eligible for this, for this position but when you look through the actual duties they're looking for some someone with experience with something you may not have experience with that even though you've held that job title before so i hope that didn't sound too complicated so like in my old career field i came up through the public affairs but in public affairs i was mostly a writer i did a lot of writing um, I did photography, but I didn't do video stuff. So even though I'm looking at a public affairs announce, public affairs specialist announcement, I can't just look at that job title and say, oh, man, I'm eligible for this position. Because if you read, if I read through that announcement, see that they're looking for someone who's been prof proficient in videography and, 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 and shooting videos and editing videos, then guess what? I'm not eligible because I don't have the experience under that section. So again make sure don't just go don't just go for the job title look through the duties and make sure that you have the experience and your resume can can accurately articulate that you have the experience that the hiring manager is looking for so with that I, there's a lot of stuff we can talk about when it comes to these job announcements but my biggest thing is just make sure you read the job announcement make sure you make sure you're eligible to be able to apply for that job announcement and again that goes back to what I just said. Don't just look at the job title. Look at the who may apply section to make sure that you're eligible to apply under the who may apply section. Make sure that you have the required documents. Don't try to submit an application without making sure that all your requirement do required documents are there. Don't just assume that you have to just turn in a resume because sometimes you have to turn in transcripts. Sometimes you have to turn in cover letters. Sometimes you have to you have to turn in your documentation. If you're a veteran, you have to turn in your veteran's documentation to prove that you qualify for the veteran's preference that you're choosing for that, that job announcement. So, again, just make sure that you uh, the, read the announcement. And if, if you read the announcement thoroughly, it won't it won't stray you in the wrong direction. So, again, I know that was a lot of information. But, again, when you go to USA Jobs and you're applying for positions or you're looking up different job announcements, just make sure that you read the whole job announcement to make sure that you don't waste time applying for a position that you were never eligible for. So, yeah. So um, I just have a few minutes left, so I'm going to see if I can go down and answer a few uh, questions. Um, I see Nicole is asking, how do you find pay scale and locality pay? Um so in the job announcement, it'll tell you in the job announcement what GS level or which if it's a, um, if it's not GS, it can be a wage grade, which is a WG. Whatever the pay for that job announcement, whatever the pay for that position, you'll see that in the job announcement. And it, it'll give you a pay range depending on if it's a one pay. Like let's say if it's, if it's a GS9, it'll give you the pay, the pay range for GS9. Um, if it's a GS 911, it'll give you the pay range for GS 9 all the way up to GS 11. So it'll tell you on that job announcement what the pay is. But if you want to know it's particularly like the locality, then you have to go. Um, all you got to do is go to Google, type in GS or type in federal pay, federal pay scale. You can type in if it's a GS position, if you're looking for GS pay scales, Type in uh, GS pay scale in Google and it'll, it'll send you straight to that and it'll have all of the GS pay scales by locality. 
Um, it'll have what you would get paid if you were living in the New York area. It'll tell you what you would get paid if you were living in the Houston area. It'll tell you what you get paid if you're living in the Los Angeles area. It'll let you know what your pay would be depending on which area. So again, just go to Google, Google federal pay scales, or you can do GS pay scales or whatever pay scale you're looking for. Just go to Google and it'll pop up with all of those uh, websites that you can find and look at your pay. So, all right. Let's see what else I have. Um, sorry if I'm taking on my chat box is kind of jumpy, so I got to kind of read through the jumpiness. Um, I think Rodney is asking, is it okay to add a cover letter if it's not required? Yes, you can still submit stuff in your application if it's not required. Now, that's something that I do and I recommend. I always recommend that even if a cover letter is not required, I always recommend that you please add a cover letter because a, a cover letter can can tell the hiring manager some stuff about you about yourself that cannot be conveyed in the resume. So yes, if I would recommend that you do a cover letter, you can you can add anything to your application that you want to add to it, even though that those items may not be required. So again, but when it comes to cover letters, as Rodney is mentioning, I will say yes, please. If you uh, please submit a cover letter, um, even if it's not required. All right. Let's see what else I have. Um, let's see. So I think Nancy is asking, I've heard different opinions on uploading resumes for VA positions. Is it better to use the resume builder on USA Jobs or upload using the same form using the same format so i will tell you this whether you upload your own resume or use the resume builder on usa jobs it doesn't matter neither one's going to make going to propel you further than the other so if you prefer to upload your own resume fine if you if you prefer to use the resume builder on usa jobs fine one is not going to propel you further than the other now, there are some jobs out there, believe it or not, that requires you to use a resume builder through USA Jobs. So make sure you be aware of that. All right. But you, the, the announcement will tell you that as you're going through the application process. But no, it doesn't matter which one you do. One won't get you further. One won't get you to the hiring manager, manager faster than the other. So, yeah. So which, it just depends on what you prefer. But I would say that if you do use your own resume, Make sure that you tailor your resume to each position. Don't just use the same resume for each for each job. And I don't mean like totally change your resume for each position, but just make sure you tweak it a little bit to make sure that it it articulates that you are the perfect candidate for that position. So read the language inside the job announcement and make sure some of that language is conveyed inside your resume. So yes, please make sure you tweak your resume for each one that you uh that you uh that you apply for. Um, let's see, what else do I have? So here's a question, and that doesn't have a name from name under it, but it says, "Is it tr is it still true if you've never worked at the VA before? Do not expect to get hired at the GS level at a GS level higher than seven, even if you're qualified." So again, this person is saying if he's a candidate, if he or she is a candidate. And they've never worked for VA before. Is it true that they won't get hired above a GS seven? No, that is that is entirely not true. I've I've seen people come in at the VA at all the various pay grades. I've seen people come in for the first time as a GS seven, as a GS nine, as a GS eleven, as a GS twelve, GS thirteen, GS fourteen. I've even seen some come in under the senior executive system. So no, it's there's no. There's no rule that says if you haven't worked for the VA, you you must come in as a GS7. So no, please don't believe that. Don't believe that at all. If you're qualified for a position above GS7, even if you haven't worked for the VA before, you can get hired into that position. So please don't don't listen to anyone that tells you that you you uh, you must accept a position GS7 or below to come into the VA. But with that being said. This is not to look down on any position that's GS5, 6, or 7. Those are awesome positions. You have a lot of great people that work for VA, and you have a lot of 
people that do great things for the VA working in those GS five, six, and seven positions. So this is not to uh, downgrade those positions. Those are, I know a lot of great people. I've I've even held a GS five position within VA before, and 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 it, you can still do great things no matter at, no matter which level you work in with VA. So. Um, with that, that's all the time that I have for today. I just want to tell everyone, thank you. Everyone who submitted a question, I want to say thank you. If I was not able to answer your question on this live today, again, we'll be, I'll go through the comment section and I'll have a team that, that will go through the comment section and get those answers for you. So just stay tuned throughout the day and throughout the week, and I'll make sure that we reply under your question in the comment section. So uh, with that, again, before you leave, we talked about the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl week. Um, I would like to see who your Super Bowl picks are. I've, I'm going with Philadelphia uh, this year. So whoever you're picking to win the Super Bowl, go ahead and do that. And so, uh, again, with that, I appreciate you guys watching. We got the week. I understand that some of you may be watching for the first time. So, and some of you may have been watching for I, – sometimes I go in the comment section and I see names of people that has been watching us for the whole three years. So no matter if it's your first day or you've been here with us the whole time, I just want to say thank you. We appreciate you. Uh, we, our job is to try to get the latest and greatest information about VA careers out to you guys to make sure that you guys become awesome candidates and eventually end up working here at the VA. So with that, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys on next Tuesday. Have a great day.